guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is part two of lesson 1.7. Uh, still taking a look at some transformations of functions, but now in this video we're going to look at things called non-rigid transformations. So our objectives down below says we're going to do some comparing of graphs that have non-rigid transformations, and then we're going to use some of those transformations to help us write equations of functions. Now those things we looked at in part one of lesson 1.7 are classified as rigid transformations because they didn't change the shape of our graph at all. They just moved where that graph was located on our grid. So those horizontal shifts, vertical shifts, and reflections, those are all rigid transformations. As opposed to the things we're going to look at in this video, non-rigid transformations, these ones are going to cause some sort of distortion or a change in the shape of our graph. The first type of non-rigid transformation that we're going to talk about is a vertical stretch or shrink. So let's just say that f of x is some function that we're dealing with. In order to vertically stretch out this function, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this function f of x and multiply it by some c value. But in order to stretch this thing out, we need that c value to be bigger than 1. Okay, So like 2, 3, 4, anything like that is going to stretch our graph up vertically. Similar to that is a vertical shrink. So again, we're taking our function f of x and multiplying it by some number c. But this time, in order to shrink our graph down vertically, we need that c value to be a fraction, like a half, a fourth, a third, something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our calculators to help us graph out some functions. Uh, we're going to look at absolute value functions. We're going to graph these things out and see how these vertical stretches or shrinks change the shape of our graph. Now, I updated the software for my graphing calculator, so it's going to look a little bit different than it did before, but it'll work exactly the same. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with this f of x equals the absolute value of x. So in order to graph this one out, we'll go y equals. Now, your absolute value symbols are underneath this math category, and you have to arrow over to where it says number across the top, and it's this first one, abs. Okay, that's our absolute value. So we go absolute value of x, and I'm just going to graph this one out so we can get a picture of what it looks like. There's our absolute value function. So now what I'm going to do is go back into my y equals screen and type in this next one. Okay, h of x equals 3 times the absolute value of x. And now graph this one out. So since we were multiplying by some c value that was bigger than 1, okay, 3 is bigger than 1, we stretched our graph up vertically. Okay, so it got taller a lot faster. Now if we graph this next one out, 1 third absolute value of x, it might be helpful to throw that 1 third stuff inside of parentheses. So parentheses 1 divided by 3, and then do your absolute value of x. Graphing this one out, we can see that since we were multiplying our absolute value of x by some c value that was a fraction, a third, our graph was vertically shrunk. So we flattened this thing out a little bit. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at the graph of this function and see if we can write out the equation that includes whatever stretch or shrink is happening in our picture. So if we think back to 1.6, this is like a cubic function, so f of x equals x cubed, okay, but there's some sort of c value in front of here being multiplied that lands us at the point 2, 2 as opposed to what we would normally land at. Now we have to figure out what this c value is. So we're going to take this ordered pair right here, 2, 2, and we're going to plug this information into our equation to solve to figure out what our c value is. So here's our x value. We're just going to plug that in. So we've got 2 cubed on the right hand side, plugging in the 2 for our x. We've also got a y value or an f of x value of 2. And we've still got this c thing out in front that we're trying to find. So now we just have to simplify it down. On the right hand side, 2 cubed is 8. So we've got c times 8. And then if we divide both sides by 8, we get a c value of 1 fourth after we reduce the fraction down. So what that tells us is back in this original equation up here, we can erase that c value and replace it with that 1 fourth. So this function right here, f of x equals 1 fourth x cubed, is the equation that gave us this picture. Now you can pause the video and try this one out on your own if you'd like to. Otherwise, just keep following along with what I'm doing. So we're taking a look at another graph, trying to write out the equation. 
If we think back to 1.6 again, this one looks like a square root function. So our base function that we're working with is c times the square root of x. And now just like we did on the last one, we're going to plug in this x value and this f of x value. So 16 equals c times the square root of 4. And now we've got to simplify this down. Well, the square root of 4 is just 2, so we've got 16 equals c times 2. Divide both sides by 2, and we end up with a c value of 8. So we go back up to the top, erase our c value, and plug in our 8 that we just found. There is another category of non-rigid transformations, which are horizontal stretches or shrinks, but they're very much related to those vertical stretches and shrinks that we looked at before. So again, if f of x is some function, we would say that our graph has a horizontal stretch. If we take this x inside of our parentheses here, if we take our x value and multiply it by some fractional c value, or we could say there's a horizontal shrink if that c value ends up being bigger than 1. So I've already got the first two functions typed into my calculator. We're going to look at f of x equals x cubed, and then we're going to look at g of x equals 2x cubed. So we're taking that x value and multiplying it by 2, and we're going to see how that affects our graph. Okay, so there's our two graphs. f of x equals x cubed is the one that shows up in blue right here. Our red one is the g of x equals 2x cubed. Since that c value was bigger than 1, we horizontally shrunk our graph. The sides of our graph came in closer. Now if we type in this next one, h of x equals 1 half x cubed. I'm going to use 0.5 as the half just to make it a little bit easier to type in. So 0.5x cubed. If we graph that one out and compare it, this time the sides of our graph are a lot wider out, so we horizontally stretched this graph out. So that is it for this video. Make sure you're filling out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.